You're listening to Rocket Night. So we would like to thank you very much to receive us here in Switzerland. Oh, it's a pleasure. Nice it's to be here. It's a big pleasure. Um, on these 20 years after Dire Straits Adventure, you've been so prolific with a large solo career. You came to the road with a beautiful new album called Long Shadows. Can you tell us your feelings about this work? What's the meaning of this title? Uh, well, it's, um, I mean, I mean in, in simple terms, it's a, a collection of um, new songs which I was working on for about 12 months. And um, what happens when you're writing, I think most people go through the same process. You have a lot of different ideas in your head and on the iPhone. <laughs> and eventually what happens is that this massive jigsaw puzzle, which is, it seems to be, um, very difficult to make sense of gradually as you work through the songs they evolve mm -hmm. and they, they all take on an individual shape of course but if you take a song like Long Shadows for instance um, I was thinking about uh, people who leave a big impression on us in the world um, whether they be musicians artists politicians uh, you know, actors, actresses, what you know, people who, uh, not celebrities, I'm talking about people who really mean something to us. Mm -hmm. And the idea that, uh, you know, they leave a long shadow behind. Mm -hmm. And for that particular song, I was thinking of um, uh, this endless tour that um, Bob Dylan is on. Mm -hmm. um, and how that must feel. And, um, and he will... You know, he definitely le le leaves a long shadow behind him because of his legacy of his music and ideas and uh, poetry and what have you. So that was the idea behind the song. And each song has an individual flavour. Of course, of which course. Is, uh, which is special to itself, you know. Of course. I really loved your concert last night in Freiburg. You have great musicians with you on stage. How did you choose them? Robin McIntosh, it's yeah. a big one. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm very, I'm very fortunate to be able to have these people playing with me because, you know, Robbie's got his own band. He writes his own songs, and uh, Paul Stacey is, uh, you know, he's played with Oasis for years and the Black Crows, and uh, and the other guys have all played with great musicians. Yeah, of I, I mean, it's it's a it's a wonderful group. Um, I've been working with some of them for, you know, probably two or three years now. Mm -hmm. Paul Stacey's new, uh, and um, I like that addition. It's very, it gives it a whole different sort of feel. Yes, I mean, you know, there's, there's, the fact is there's a lot of great musicians out there, but these, these guys um, understand better than most how the music should feel. Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, that's the most important thing. Of course. You, you'll find an awful lot of really great musicians who can just play all the parts, and it sounds fine. Mm -hmm but it's got to be played with a certain kind of feeling. It's the most important thing. And you've got to get that feeling across to the audience. Yeah, really. That's really, that's the job of when you play yeah, live. Yeah. You know, we do it because we love it. And... Um, I saw yesterday you were very happy. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, it, it's a pleasure for me. It's yeah. a real pleasure. I mean, it's always been a pleasure. I'm very fortunate doing something which I love. 60% of the show what, uh, was based on Dire Straits songs. Well, the fans love it, but it's also so important for you to do it? Well, it, it would be strange not to, because you know I've been involved with these songs for 40 years nearly. And, um, you know, they, they're deep in my heart, and they mean a lot to me still. Of course. So I choose the ones that I like to sing and I choose the ones that 
work with uh, each other and also with my music. Uh, so it's a balance. It's a balancing act. I think it would be uh, a bit crazy to come out and just play completely my stuff um, because uh, you know I'm a realist and uh, you know my my associations with Dire Straits go back to the very beginning and I understand the music because I helped make it the way it is so it would be uh, a bit crazy not to play the songs and you know they're great songs. I mean, of course, you know, I, it's a pleasure to play Romeo and Juliet. I mean, I don't know how many times I've played it. I, I all songs of swing, but every night, as soon as I start playing them, I just feel good inside. So, I mean, why not? Well, very you know. well. What are some of the changes you had seen through these years? The music business, technological music, it's an art form. Uh, well, you could probably answer that better. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just different now. Yeah, it's different, it, uh, it, and it's um, we just have to get used to the difference. We have to get used to the fact that uh, things change. And if change for better. They just change. I mean, I, I think you could say, in some ways, it's better. I mean, it's amazing that you can have your entire life on a phone, whereas twenty years ago, you if somebody said that, you'd have gone. Ha, ha, ha. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> But in fact, actually, it, it, uh, they are, it's an incredible world we live in now and you shouldn't, one shouldn't really get too wound up with it. The fact is that it's possible if you make the effort to listen to music in the right kind of way or in another way. I'm not saying what's right or wrong. The new generation that's listening to music now, they grow, they've grown up with an iPhone and pressing buttons and it goes everything goes straight onto their phone mm. I came from a generation where you went to a record shop and you bought a a record mm. and a lot of the younger people now like to do that too so there's a mixture of yeah, things of going on the basic problem though is the, is the quality for me the quality of the music that comes out of um, digital music it's got better when it first came out it was a disaster now it's got better Um, and also the fact that it's if you're not getting paid for your work which what happens is with a lot of music that is basically uh, stolen for want of a better word uh, it's, diff it's very difficult to get the money in to then make another record mm. so that's why there's an awful lot of people playing in venues and touring big, to pay for their next record of course In the past, we would go out um, on the road and uh, be supported by the record company in order to sell records, but you don't sell records now. So you basically, you put a CD out or a digital download to get people to come to your concerts. It's the other way around now. It's all changing, but yeah. to me, the most important thing has always been The songs. The songs. The songs are the most important thing. They're the things that live on. Everything else moves. But the, if it's a good song, it'll, it'll, it'll last. Of course. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Many great musicians truly believe that uh, they are better musicians together than they are separately. Do you agree? <laughs> well, there's something sort of magical that happens when musicians get together. Uh, and I'm not just saying with these guys but um, these these musicians I'm playing with right now for instance because they can play just about anything I ask them to do incredibly simple things sometimes uh, which is kind of, it, it, it's, it's it's simple but it has to be played in the, in the right kind of way so um, I don't I, it's very difficult to generalize but I would say that It's much more pleasurable playing. This is why we come out and play concerts because you get things that happen of an evening which mm -hmm. don't happen if you're just rehearsing. If you're just rehearsing to get all the bits right. Okay, you sing this bit here, you play that bit there. Oh, by the way, when we get to that, can you just pull back a bit? You work it all out in rehearsals. When you actually perform, 
that's when it starts to come alive and people really interact it's these are special times yeah they're yeah. special moments mm. they should not be wasted looking back what were your best memories with dire straits finally oh well many, many. there's too many really many we were very fortunate we had a um a, a very good team we had a, a good songwriting good musicians uh and the timing was good um people used to come out and buy records and go to concerts and you know we we it's difficult to think about it at the time when it's happening but if you look back it's always easy to look back yeah there's there's important moments obviously you know when you get your first gold album you know mm -hmm. when you go we went to Holland and got our first gold album that's really an amazing thing to happen being number one in America is an amazing thing to happen um Uh, and playing in Live Aid, playing the Nelson Mandela concert. Uh, these are um, very special moments. Very, very special. Yeah, and you get to play with, occasionally you get to play with some of the best musicians in the world. So it's uh, it's an incredible privilege. Yeah, of course. That's what I would say. It's an incredible privilege. From the outside, our straight tours look like a quite uh, joyous affairs with a large chance of camaraderie between all the members. Is that the way you feel when you were in the middle of it? Yes, I mean, it's, it's one of the most important things about a band is actually how everybody interacts, how everybody gets on. Mm. Those are, that's really important. Obviously, the music has got to be good and strong. And, but when you're on the... Like the last tour, we were on the road for a long time, you know, for about a year and a half, With a few breaks, we played 250 shows or something, and you've got to really trust your instincts when you take somebody on that kind of journey. And everybody got on, everybody got on very well. But I knew at the end of that, I I needed a break. I needed a big break. I knew Mark needed a break. He was he was done at that kind of level. Yeah, you know, of course. We were playing. We played to a lot of people. It was very stressful. And there was a time just to pull back. I mean, we, you know, we, we hit that very high point in 1991, 92, and we all needed to get back, pulled back from it all. And mm -hmm. so when people ask me if there's going to be a Dire Straits reunion, I, 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 I can't see the point. I don't see the point, you know, really. I'd, I'd rather be doing this, really, than going out, playing in massive audiences again. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to do that anymore, mm. you know. Back to the beginning, did you ever experience an epiphany, a moment that you made go and you say, yes, I want to be a musician? Oh, well, I think I wanted to be a musician when I was 14 years old. 14 years. <laughs> But uh, it took, took a little bit of a while to realize the dream, if you like. I, uh, I, before Dire Straits, I played in probably 10 different bands. 10 different bands? Yeah, just you know, blues bands, soul bands. A little bit of jazz, but not too much, because I'm, I'm not I'm not particularly jazz orientated. But yeah, played in three piece bands, four piece bands, all sorts of things. I've always been, you know, that's been my world really. Mm -hmm. But I think the only reason why the Dire Straits thing worked was because first of all, Mark and I met each other, and we very quickly felt um, felt good about what we were doing. It worked. We had a very similar approach to uh, how we wanted the music to be and it just it just happened very naturally. Mm. And when something like that happens, and I realized in Mark that there was a, it was a pretty exceptional guitar player. I played with a lot of people by then and You know, he'd started to write some very interesting songs and I realized then that we had a something different. And the fact is that you, if you want to make it in the music business, there's no point in sounding like everybody else. You've got to have your own unique sound. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, coming out in the middle of punk music, it made Dire Straits stand out a bit because it was so different from the punk thing. Of course, all the promoters thought that we were a punk band because it was called Dire Straits. 
<laughs> so I used to get these phone calls, you know, in the flat from promoters saying, oh, great, you know, you're a great name for a punk band. You can come and play at our place. And I said, well, we're not actually a punk band. It's sort of rock and roll band. <laughs> oh, sorry, oh, we don't want you then. You know, <laughs> and um, it was like that. Difficult. Right. It was difficult to get a gig. Yeah, of course. Difficult, well, you know, course. but then gradually yes, know, of course. things happened. Yes. Yesterday I bought one of your beautiful works, a lovely blue Stratocaster painting. <laughs> I'm surprised not to see any bass guitar. Why, John? Oh, well, because I, I, I did a whole load of guitar paintings. And there was a, um, a, my favorite jazz bass in there, which I painted. And I sold the, I sold the painting, so I, didn't, I couldn't make any prints of it. Oh. These, the ones you saw last night, were prints. I do a limited edition of the prints. Of course, of course. Because the paintings, are, I think I've got two left, that's all of the paintings. All the others have gone, they're all sold. So, But I, I, I really, the guitar paintings are something separate from what I do. I mean, most of my painting is quite abstract, if you ever look on the site. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, that's what attracts me more than anything else. I did the, I did the guitars for fun. I mean, just, yeah, just yeah, for... Yeah. And I... And I I love painting, so. And I saw your. Uh, tell me about something. Your paintings. Why this still life mention on most of them? Still life, red. Well, well, because they are. I mean, still life covers a big genre. Uh, you know, still life really involves any inanimate object. Of course. So you can make you can make a still life of this table with that photo. Yes. I mean, yes. You know, I went to the, uh, the Kunstmuseum in, um, in Basel today, mm. which has just been reopened. Mm -hmm. And they have the most incredible collection, for instance, of uh, uh, Braque and Picasso of the uh, Cubist yes. time. Yes. And uh, I just went there today and just immersed myself in, mm. in that work. And it doesn't matter how many times I see it, it completely fascinates me how you can paint like that. I don't paint like that and I don't think I can paint like that but I love the energy that they managed to do in 1910, 1911 whenever it was when they were doing it. And um, so... What paintings do you appreciate? In? Oh, I just, I, I, I've, from a very early age, from 15, 16 years old, I've, I, I don't know what it was but I just loved going to art galleries which is very unusual for a teenager. I uh, loved looking at paintings. I had a very good art teacher at school who showed me how to look at paintings and understand them a little bit. But it's really, it's a gut that when you look at a painting, it's something you feel inside straight away. You can't, in, you can intellectualize about it if you like, but it's, if it doesn't hit you straight away, it doesn't mean anything to me. So I, that's the way, that's what I, I get the, that sort of energy from paintings. I, and I love, that's the reason why I love painting myself. Uh, Last simple. week I was in Paris at the Grand Palais uh -huh. to see the Portuguese exhibition from a great Portuguese painting, Amadeu Sousa Cardoso, a beautiful one. Uh, I don't know him. He died at 30 years old and he was a, he was a big friend of Modigliani. Oh, uh, was he? A very, very good uh. exhibition in Paris. Similar kind of work or not, or as Modigliani? Yes, similar, yeah. similar. They've got some. They've got a couple of good Modigliani's at the the Kunstmuseum. Mm. So it's really. Mm -hmm. They've got a fantastic collection there. Yeah, really. really? Oh my God, really? have you been in there? Have you been there recently since it's been redone uh, in, in Basel? The you know, I live. I live. I live at, uh, in Colmar, sixty kilometers from here. Ah. And from time to time, I came here to to see some exhibitions. So you are telling the museum it's open today? It's opened. It's opened, and it was almost nobody there. Oh, okay. And the paint they've got a some, they've got a fantastic collection mm -hmm. they really do it's surprising for me for to see a musician uh, because it's rare 90 percent of musicians the musicians when they came to a town they stay on the on the wall and they never visit the town and you are fantastic you visit uh, you know, just get in the cab and go there yeah when when dire Straits was on on tour if we went to a city where there was a great art museum I just get up early in the morning and go to the art museum mm. while everybody else was asleep. Very good, very good. <laughs> well, you know, it wasn't a problem for me. <laughs> yeah, really. In 2005, you were discovered a Celtic rock band called Kunla. 
yeah. Are you still playing with them from time to time? No, no. No. That was just a... Uh, experience. It was an experience and um, I have to say it was an incredible amount of fun. Mm. It was a bit, it was very mad. It mm. was very Irish and very mad. Mm. But great musicians, great, great fun. Completely uh, out of control. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That concert, the Live in Les Beaux concert, which I rec recorded mm. with them, it was the first time any of them had done a gig when they hadn't had a lot to drink. I said, we're going to record this gig tonight and you can have half a Guinness before you go on and then nothing else. You can drink afterwards as much as you want, but we're recording the show tonight and I want everybody sober. Ooh. And they were going, ah, oh, we can't do that. We can't do that. <laughs> it's impossible. We can't go on. We've got to have a few beers before we go on. I said, no, absolutely not. We're going to record this sober. Great. And they came off afterwards and they said, my God, that was fantastic. Oh, right. They loved it. Great. But they, they went back to their old habits after that, you know. So we talk about Bear Straits and the, what do you think about Mark Knopfler's sol solo career? Well, it's... Do uh, you met him recently? Oh, we had a drink last week before oh. I came out. I, we live very close to each other. Mm. Um, uh, Mark, Mark is in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a different space now. Yeah. And um, it's very rare for a musician to come out of a well-known band and have a successful solo career. Sting did it out of the police. Um, Mark did it out of Dire Straits. Uh, Phil Collins. Phil Collins, yeah. Phil Collins. Now, we can, now we're running out of people here. Yeah. It's very unusual. Very unusual. And he's actually made more albums as a solo artist than he has he did with Dire Straits. And he writes continuously. I spoke to him actually this morning. And, um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a workaholic. He just can't stop. You know, that's what he, that's what he loves doing. Yes. He, writes, he writes different kind of things now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, he's not somebody to, who wants to look back. And when people go and see a concert, they... Sometimes they're disappointed. He doesn't play Dire Straits things, but ah, you know, it's his, it's his choice. If he doesn't want to play him, he doesn't want to play him. Yeah, of course. You know, there's so many bloody tribute bands now. Yes. You know. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> there you are know. some bad. Well, there's some good and some bad. I mean, you know, of that's course. the way it is. And, you know. So we, this is the question everybody must ask you about. Tea. So, what would you take to get Mark Knopfler and you on the studio again? <laughs> uh, I, I have no idea. I'd be very surprised if, Yo, it, if it happened. You know. God only knows. God only knows. But I, in fact, actually, you know, when we finished Brothers in Arms and that tour, I, I pretty much, I pretty much thought, well, you know, that's probably enough. And then he rang me up one day and said, "I've got some songs. You fancy going in and doing them?" Mm. And I said. You, you are joking, aren't you? I think we, we're kind of done. After Brothers in Arms, I think we're done. I'm not sure we can do any better than that. And he said, oh, well, you know, we might as well. Let's go and do them. So we went yeah, out. God only knows. God yeah. only knows. Maybe, yeah. that, maybe that's the... Uh, that's, well, somebody's already written that song. Uh, no, it's, I, 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 I doubt it. He's in a different space. Yes, I, of I'm, I, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. It's on a very small level, and it suits me very well. Of course, it suits me fine. You know. After David Bowie or even Prince recently dead, would you say you are pessimist about the music future, musical future? Pessimistic? Yes. No, no. I'm an eternal optimist. Optimist. Always. Yeah. It's great. I wouldn't be sitting here otherwise. I, yes. I, 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 what we have to realize, of course, is that you know rock and roll music now has been around for over 50 years so we're going to start losing some people who were important to us well we've lost a lot of people who are important to us and uh, you know rock and roll musicians can lead a pretty hard life you know they can push themselves quite hard so you know I think if you if you live a long life as a musician uh, you're very fortunate because it's 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 a 
tough. It's a t when you get older. It's a tough job, and you you know you're away from home, and you probably maybe drink a little bit too much, and you you probably don't get enough sleep, and you 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 know the food is. I mean, the food today is great, but generally speaking, the food is not that great. You know, and uh, so it's difficult to look after yourself when you're working on the road. Yeah, of course. It's it's tough on you. You, you know, but. Um, I think it's 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 just the way it is. I mean, some people, you know, look at those old blues guys. They go on to the their eighties, and uh, you know, and recently, I don't know how old Prince was, fifty five, fifty six, fifty seven. I don't know, fifty seven or something. Yes, fifty seven. You know, uh, David Bowie was in his sixties. I mean, you know, it was really a really surprise because nobody. What with Prince? Yes. I I think he's an incredible, pr incredibly private person, and nobody, yes. you know, nobody really kind of. Nobody doesn't. Nobody knows these things. Nobody knows what's going on in people's lives, really. Yeah. You know, I think you're very. You know, very, you've got to. As I keep saying, you've got to keep dodging the bullets. You know. And Yesterday not, you dedicated the song to him. Yeah, I think. It, well, because you know that's a very appropriate song, "Long Shadow." You know, "Long Shadows." I mean, he he he's left a long shadow behind. Yeah. You know, course. which uh, uh, affects us all. Of course, of course. And. Uh, you know, we, we're all part of the same world, mm. that musical world. We're all part of the big world, but mm. that musical world is, you know, when one of your own goes too early, it's quite shocking. It feels doesn't feel right. Of course, of course. It doesn't feel right. Uh, you are the owner of one of the 50 best pubs around Britain <laughs> and a partnership in two hotels. <laughs> is it easy to share this business with music affairs? Oh, well, you know, I... I To be honest, um, you know, when when Dire Straits stopped in 91, 92, I had some time on my hands and I, A, I started painting full time. But then I, I rather foolishly got involved in, you know, buying some hotels and what have you. They've all gone now, I've sold them all. That's, that's all finished. Uh, one I had for 20 odd years and that's gone. Um, I now just have the local pub around the corner from me. Because it makes it I, I, it, I feel part of the community much more if having, ha having had that. And I respect the fact that people come there. And, no, that was, that was just, that was a moment of madness. <laughs> But you are still the owner. Huh? You are still the owner. Of the pub, yeah. Yeah, the pub. Yeah, no, I've sold everything else. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, I wouldn't do that again, no. It's too, it's too time consuming. It fills your head mm. too much. Of course, of course. You, know, you have to have people running these things for you, and then you've got to trust people, and it just yeah. gets complicated. And, You have music on this pub? Uh, well, actually, I, I did, I did, I did do a gig in my pub uh, a year or so ago. Must be two years ago now. Oh, really? Which uh, you can see some of it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. With calling Elvis and Sultans and a couple of my things on there. Great. Yeah, but just acoustic, you know, just playing yeah, acoustic of guitars. Of course, you know. of course. In the pub, it's better to play acoustic. Well, of course. You know. So we came to Brexit. What do you think about John? This is a, a great. Yeah, well, it's a bit chaotic. A great comedy, I think. Well, you know, it's a, it, but it's a serious comedy. It's a, it's, yes. a bit, it's a bit chaotic. I, I, I'm I'm still slightly uh, uh, uncertain about how Europe is going to sort itself out. Um, I think the intentions are good. I think the idea is good, but I think what's happened is it's got, it's got too big. When when the UK joined, there were, I think there was seven or eight, I can't remember, seven countries. That's fine, but just going like this and now we're taking all these other countries in, I think it's a mistake. I think it's a big mistake, but it was probably necessary because of the way the Soviet Union was breaking up and all the rest of it. it I mean, politics is very complicated. Yes, but very complicated. I think it's an experiment which probably isn't working too well. And it's a shame. Do I think that the UK should leave? Do you know, I don't even want to have that. I don't even want to have the decision myself. Of course, of course. But because it's an, it's an, we are a part of it. We're part of it. And, you know, it's got some good things about it. It's got some bad things about it. Do I think we'd survive outside of the European Union? Of course we would. Everybody, of course we'd survive. 
the best thing for Greece to have done would have to be let to leave the European Union, so it could manage its own affairs, you know, write the debt off and start again. Greece should never have been a part of the European Union, should never have been part of it, you know, because there's a different mentality. Of course, of course. And you, you can't judge the whole of the European Union on 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 a, on a, on, a, on, a, on a German mentality. I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, I know Germany very well. It's a completely different country from, say, Spain, Portugal, Italy. Yes, I've been to all these countries. Of course. You know, there's a different way of thinking about the world. And you add all this together in the same mix. Yes. It's like making a cake, yeah. right? If, if all the ingredients going to the cake don't make sense together... Of course. You can't bloody well eat it. Of course. You know, it's inedible. Yeah, yeah, really. And that's, I think, that's, right. that's what's happening with, with the European Union. Mm. I don't really care whether people are elected or non elected as mem people who run it. Mm. That's kind of immaterial. I think just as an experiment, it's probably it's not working too great, which is a shame. Yeah, of course. I think it's course. a big shame because, you know, I think the intentions are good. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't really care whether the UK is in or out. Some people care a lot, mm. some people go, I don't care either, but I've no idea how what's going to happen. I really have no idea. I think it could be that or that. It's that. It's very, very close. Of course, of course. And in some ways, the Europe will be different. It might be better if we're out of it. It might be better if we stay in it. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody does. And what's about Donald Trump? Oh. It's like some glorified, it's some glorious comedy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, actually, I sense what's happening. I mean, it's just my particular opinion. But he's, he's obviously stirred things up so much. And now, the best card he can play is to start saying serious things. Because he's got the backing of God knows who but he seems to be winning in all sorts of places. He's got the backing. If he just calms down a bit and says some serious things rather than just slagging everybody off and being a buffoon, I don't know what can happen. I think it would be a disaster for America. Of course. But of course. everybody's saying that. But the fact of the matter is, America is really run not by the president. It's run by everybody behind the president. People say, Donald, actually, you can't do that. That's not allowed, you know. And he won't be allowed to do some some of the things he wants to do. He will not be allowed to do it. Yes, yes. Like yes. they wouldn't have given Ronald Reagan free reign. Mm. That would have been chaotic because he, you know, he wasn't he wasn't able to do it. Yeah, of course. Every it's president true. gets advised by the executive that basically run the government and run all the financial institutions and all the nothing will change that much. You know, Clinton, Trump, I don't know. I wouldn't like to be an American right now. <laughs> That's all I would say. Have you been in the, in the Florida? Florida? Yeah, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. played in Miami and uh, Tampa and Orlando and places like that. Yeah, I was in Miami a couple of years back just um, mm -hmm. with my wife for a few days. Oh, you, know, okay. you know, just hanging out at the beach. Of course, it's a real beautiful yeah. place. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, it's 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 a bit crazy. Yeah, it's a bit crazy, and uh, you can get into trouble down there. But um, I think it's a, yeah, it's a it's a it's a, I think it's a great part of America. Yeah, of course. I mean, you, you've got fantastic weather. You've got incredible kind of, you know, beaches. And I mean, and you've got a pretty amazing city. Uh, it kind of works. I think the, the the airport's a nightmare, but I mean, you know, but then most airports are a nightmare. But, you know, yeah. So, John, uh, thank you very much. You are very kind to receive us. Pleasure. It was a big pleasure to, to meet you after all these years. No. Thank you very much. Okay, nice. You're listening to Rock at Night. Thanks for the intro melody. It's called Get On Down by Billy Bass Alford. Thanks.